sometimes it feels like DNA gets all the credit. Yes, DNA is very important. It codes for your traits. But sometimes what gets left out is how important RNA is. Because without RNA, you actually couldn't get that genetic message out to your cells so that they can start producing proteins. RNA is a very important biomolecule, just as important as DNA. So what we're going to do right now is compare and contrast RNA with DNA. This is really important to understand because if we don't understand it, we can't understand protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is the process that gets your DNA to code for the proteins that make up so many of your traits. So let's talk about DNA and RNA. They both sound kind of similar, and actually they are both nucleic acids, which are a type of biomolecule. But let's go ahead and compare and contrast them real quickly. So DNA, it stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. The deoxyribose is a sugar, and nucleic acid is the type of biomolecule that it is. DNA is also double-stranded. That means it has two strands, and it's in a double helix shape, also known as a twisted ladder. We also have mentioned the bases in DNA. Remember, the bases are really important because they actually code for the traits. So the bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And they go together like this. If we remember the little mnemonic device, apples in the tree, that helps you remember A goes with T, and car in the garage, so C goes with G. Also, DNA is found in the nucleus. So those are all things about DNA. RNA, on the other hand, stands for ribonucleic acid. The ribo, that's actually part of ribose, which is a sugar. So just like DNA had deoxyribose, RNA has ribose. They both contain a sugar. RNA also has four bases. Remember in DNA, they were A and T, C and G. Well, in RNA, you have all the same bases except for one. There is no T, otherwise known as thymine. There's no T in RNA. Instead, it's a U. The U is for uracil. So you can't remember apples in the tree for RNA. That's not going to work because there's no T. So instead, try remembering apples under. So it's kind of like they're under a tree. <laughs> a for adenine and U for uracil. They go together. Also, there's still C and G. Remember, cars in the garage, that helps you remember cytosine goes with guanine. So the bases are pretty much the same in RNA, except for the uracil instead of thymine. RNA also will start out in the nucleus, but it's going to travel out of the nucleus. It's going to help deliver the message. There are actually three types of RNA. But don't worry, because what they stand for, it really helps give away what they do. And let me give you an example. So the first type of RNA is messenger RNA. And the actual acronym that you'll see for it is mRNA, messenger RNA. And its job is to carry a message based off of the DNA. Second type of RNA is called the transfer RNA, or abbreviated tRNA. And its job is to transfer the message. And then we have rRNA. That stands for ribosomal. RNA. And so, kind of like it sounds, it actually is a component of the ribosome. If you remember back in cells, we've talked about how ribosomes make protein. And it's a very important thing in protein synthesis. Obviously, ribosomes are going to be involved because that's what we're doing. We're making protein. Now that you know the difference between RNA and DNA, you're completely ready to explore the concept of protein synthesis. We have another clip on that fascinating process. That's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious.